This episode of MNF Reps is presented by the brand new and free GX app. What is the GX app? Man, am I glad you asked. It's a training tool that combines years of data and analysis from super knowledgeable doctors, scientists, trainers, and strength coaches to help athletes of all skill levels unlock their potential. Add companion hardware like the GX Sweat Patch and the GX Smart Bottle to make the experience even more personalized. If you're dedicated to training and want useful, high quality and well-researched material, you'll want to take a look at this app. Besides, it's free. What do you have to lose? This conversation is with Eric Fries. He is the principal scientist at the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, and there were a few things that I needed to know. For starters, what is the Gatorade Sports Science Institute? Turns out that Eric and his team are more ingrained in capturing and using data to help athletes perform better and less involved with finding new flavors for Gatorade drinks. A couple other questions I had, how did Eric's research integrate with the GX sweat patch and GX app? And most importantly, did he get this photo taken at Sears? The first thing is, what is the Gatorade yeah. Sports Science Institute? Gatorade Sports Science Institute was founded back in, in 1985, really with the, initially with just the goal of, of being that kind of science behind the brand to ensure that you know we were at the forefront of understanding what the athlete needs were and how we could best support them through uh, nutritional opportunities you know initially really sporting you know our main Gatorade thirst quencher beverage line but like what else is there what other opportunities are and so our mission has always been to to support athletes and practitioners to help them optimize uh, their health their performance through research education and, and service. So we have four main pillars. I just listed three of them. We have a research pillar, an education pillar, an innovation pillar, and a service pillar. And we have different groups of individuals that operate across all those different functions. All of us kind of wear different hats. We dabble in different spaces at all different times, but ultimately, you know, our interactions at the end of the day are designed to help athletes figure out how to just become better, help them optimize their health and their performance. And you joined the you joined in 2018, right? So looks like where'd you get that? That's a serious picture. Looks like from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so this is on the, uh, the the Gatorade Sports Science Institute website, and I was going through you know your resume, I guess, which is probably you know abbreviated. But some of the areas of expertise, I'm curious to know specifically the last two. How you integrated them into the app, how you integrate them into your overall work there. Like, uh, cause obviously the exercise physi physiology and the high intensity interval training in having input in that. And I'm sure you work closely with Dan Schaefer, who is, who's in charge of the programming uh, of the app. But the last two, is that more for work with the sweat patch uh, as well as the analytics and the data that goes into the app to create those specific programs? Yeah. So I would say, let me, I'll kind of take a step back here. So I already lived in Texas at that point, uh, operating in a different group within our organization. And when we opened up the satellite facility here at the star, um, it seemed like a great opportunity for me to join GSSI, get back into my core competency in and around exercise physiology and helping athletes. Um, so I, I came here to launch this brand new lab. So when we first started there, you know, it was a blank of a building. There was just, we had to get all the equipment in, we had to find everything, we hired staff. So we had to put together not only what, um, you know, what, what the needs and demands were for a local facility to operate as a satellite research lab, but then also staff and resource it appropriately. So that, that was the first couple of years and us being on the campus of the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters, our primary focus was American football out of the gate, specifically kind of looking at the impact that football has and how athletes are recovering from football to identify, hey, are there nutritional opportunities that we can help athletes recover faster um, and, but first we really had to characterize the football athlete. And at, right now there's just not a whole lot of stuff out there, very limited research on American football. Typically, if you do like a PubMed or a Google Scholar search for football, it's going to come up with all the, you know, international football, soccer, soccer yeah, studies. Right. There's, so you have to sift through a lot to find really much on, on American football. And they're, they're here and there. There's some people have done it, um, but it's very closed off. So we've kind of had to kind of build that from the ground up. So that was kind of the first thing that we've done. And then what we started doing is understanding that we had that ability to understand how athletes are responding and therefore how we can be a bit more prescriptive in providing recommendations to athletes. And that turned into kind of us taking on this, this GX personalization uh, initiative. And now that's what 
not all of our lab responsibilities are, but my team, most of my team's responsibilities, especially on the commercial integration side of things, once things have kind of gotten into the validation stage. Now, to directly answer your question around kind of the postprandial lipid metabolism and the phytonutrient supplementation, those were definitely areas of expertise from my past that I probably would say I don't have a whole lot of, there probably isn't a whole lot of useful application to those in the current space right now, especially in GX. So how big is this and how many people are, and how many different teams are, are there working and, and what are some of the other areas which they're working on? Yeah, so we're 28 to 30 full-time employees across the United States and um, a little bit of an international presence in uh, the United Kingdom. Um, they, we do have some international advisors that are spaced out across some of our uh, major global partners, think like uh, Mexico, South America, um, APAC, China, for example. So we have some different advisors kind of, you know, uh, systematically placed for specific businesses in those areas that are more or less extensions of GSSI. But when you look at just the footprint physically in the United States, we have three main facilities, um, really four now, I guess, in a way. Um, our main research headquarters is based out of uh, Bahala, New York, so right outside of New York City. And that lab is integrated into our product development teams so that it's a, a seamless transition from kind of the research that we do, but also being able to communicate with the product developers who are going to be developing, you know, the, the beverages, the products, the, the food supplements, the things that are actually going to be going to athletes. So that allows for that connectivity. And that's headed up by Dr. Lindsay Baker. And she's really the head of that entire research pillar that I brought up from, from the get-go. So right. she has a fairly large team. I want to say we have six or seven individual uh, presence at that facility, somewhere around there now. And then the one other small group in the United States that we do have is based out of Chicago, um, which Drew operates out of our Chicago old, old post office, um, you know, Gatorade headquarters. Mm -hmm. So we do have a, a group of individuals that operates out of that facility, um, mostly supporting innovation. So being there tied directly with the brand to ensure that um, any brand innovations, any product claims, education, things of that nature, they're going to be kind of consumer facing, athlete facing is well integrated with that, with that brand things, um, to make sure that we kind of always have, have that synonymous pulse together. I didn't know it was that, that big. And, and I guess now that the app is launched, what is your day to day like in the involvement with it? Meaning what is it that you have to do? Are you looking at analytics? Are you looking at feedback? Are you now looking at updates in version two stuff? What is it that you're doing to try to ensure that the growth continues? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I think it's twofold and you kind of hit on this. It's it's one being very closely tied to understanding how individuals are utilizing that, the, the app, how, where are they getting stuck? What are the analytics and, and data pieces look like to where people are really ingrained and really passionate about using this piece of the app and maybe not these other features of the app. Mm -hmm. And then trying to understand the consumer problem of maybe why are they not interested in using that side or what else do we need to bring in to make this more user-friendly to, to look at it? So like I said, my team, we, we look at both kind of the commercial front of kind of how individuals are utilizing it, how to best um, interact and, and make this as useful for the end consumer as possible. But also to your point, it's what does this app look like in the next four, five, six years? What does the entire digital ecosystem look like? Is it right. more technologies? Is it more integrations? Is it APIs to connect to different pieces? You know, we're already connected in with, with Apple. Um, right now, we don't have plans to pull any other data sources in right now, but assessing those types of things is, is highly important. So we stay very much at the forefront of really what are high performance teams, what are elite athletes utilizing, what data points from their practitioners are most useful and insightful for them to understand, to be able to, to make more dynamic and specific recommendations for individuals. So we have that kind of, you know, listening aspect of it. And then how do we kind of start seeding some money into some future areas um, to understand, you know, what could be impactful. We're obviously very much at the center of the Gatorade brand is, is hydration. So we have a patch, we've got the bottle. And the next thing that we're kind of trying to understand is like, is there a way not just to understand sweat rates during exercise, but hydration status across the day 
and during activity so that we can be maybe not even more prescriptive, but better prepare athletes to show up in a hydrated state versus them showing up dehydrated, them losing another two to 3% body mass and putting themselves at an even more disadvantage. So you've been, you've been at this since 2018. Now technology changes really quickly, right? So you kind of have to be malleable in how you're doing things and be fluid and just, just change and adapt. Anything that you were really hell bent on or that you really wanted to see happen and then something changed and it was just kind of like a whole big, like two steps back or anything like that? Those are some really good questions because at the end of the day, I think the scientist in me wants to collect as much data as humanly possible. But at the end of the day, you really only, only want to collect what's really going to be impactful from the user and really what's going to make a difference and be able to uh, make more precise or more dynamic recommendations. You want to, you want if you're collecting data from somebody for it to actually be useful. In a scientific setting, we capture as much data as humanly possible and then see what makes sense. So it's a little bit of a flip on its head, and it's hard to be a little bit more, maybe maybe not dynamic, not the right word, but a little bit more exploratory when you're in this type of setting. Because the last thing you want to do, like I said, is is continue to ask for more and more and more from the user. There's a lot of data privacy issues out there in the world right now. So people are going to get more and more concerned about, okay, I'm giving you this data and where it's right. going. And different technology companies out there have different policies and rules and whether or not to utilize the data for different aspects, whether they're selling to different parties, we're very passionate about making sure that it's your data and we're only collecting the data that we need to, need to collect to ensure that we're giving you the most prescriptive recommendations that we can. Now, that being said, um, you know, I do think we're constantly looking at, you know, what could make things more dynamic and how we can pull those in. The challenge there, and this is this is the interesting piece that you're kind of alluding to, is that, you know, our designers are really good at making things, you know, sticky for the consumer, right. but it has to be something that's gonna, gonna change very rapidly. Um, and, and actually you can see a benefit from it happening the second day, not, maybe not the second that you give it to them, but there's gonna be continual changes day over day, week over week. I think like body composition, for example, is something that is used quite often in, in elite sport um, and is used from a health and wellness perspective. Right? Could that be super valuable and impactful in our um, digital ecosystem? Yes. The problem is that, that doesn't change quite a lot. And you're also going to ask people to either, do they do an image scan? Do they go get a DEXA? Do they do a BOD pod? You have data coming from a, a lot of different sources with different validities baked into them. It can get a little bit confounding and challenging. Um, and like I said, it's not going to, you can do body comp once and then maybe do it again, three months, six months or whatever. Not a whole lot of changes that happen. The whole objective is to democratize sports science, which in you know colloquial terms is you want to bring it to more people who may not have the benefit of these elite trainers or coaches. How do you get that out there? I know you're more on the, the you're a scientist, but you're also working directly with athletes. Do you kind of put that on your shoulders as well, even if it's not in your job description? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and I think we've started to utilize the the GX patch with. Um, with elite athletes in different settings, depending on what the, the opportunity exists. You know, I think sweat testing, you, know, you used it a lot, but it's democratizing or the sweat patch is democratizing our elite sweat testing capability. We still do go out in the field and my team will go sweat test different athletes, different individuals, different organizations in the field to give them very prescriptive recommendations back. There are certain times that we have to go out and, and have that layer of scientific integrity. And there's other times where the patch makes perfect sense and we can just utilize this, usual, utilize our digital ecosystem and scale that to you know more individuals than the five to 10 to upwards of 15 individuals that we can test in one session with three or four scientists. Instead, you can, you know, the mass amount you can do is so much different. So not only are we like kind of helping, I guess, really from that commercial side of things, but we're also on the back end publishing research to support the validity of this um, of this technology, and so we're bringing it to the scientific community. We're presenting at conferences like the American College of Sports Medicine. We're sh showcasing work that we do and having it peer reviewed and and speak about it so that we can get the comments back from other experts in the field to ensure that we're you know, bringing the most valid te technological device that we can to the market. And that's really Dr. Lindsay Baker's responsibility and job. And I think she's done a fantastic job over the past six, seven, eight years now exploring different technology company partners. What is your suggestion for people about supplements or how to approach them or, you know, 
just your take on them because I think a lot of people feel like they must have them. I think it's misinformation, not just about supplements. It's about food in general. It's about different mm-hmm. diets. It's about different exercise training programs. Every which thing is, it, it almost has to be sold as this is the best thing since since sliced bread. Right. Otherwise, people just kind of look away. I think there's opportunity to carve out, maybe this is wishful thinking for the scientists in me, that there's 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 some space there to carve out you know, real education opportunities to showcase what you really need and, and maybe right. not waste money in certain areas. And th- these are things that are really advantageous specifically for you. And maybe that's the problem is that we haven't been able to personalize things to the extent that now we can through these digital enterprises, you know, supplements, supplements are a tool. Um, at the end of the day, they are a tool to maybe fill in a need or sprinkle right on the top of that, that pyramid and to kind of give you that, that ultra benefit. But supplements aren't going to overcome a bad diet. Supplements aren't going to help you overcome continuous bad sleep. You know, caffeine's a supplement. You had one bad night of sleep and you have to go go train or you really want to go train the next day or you need to perform. Like, yeah, caffeine's going to help you that day. But every single day over the course of two months, three months, bad sleep is just way going to overshadow caffeine. At some point, you're, you're going to run out of fuel on that front. So I think you have to look at it almost from a pyramid approach. And you could you could approach this from from anything, you know, just from purely from a food perspective. It's getting getting the right macronutrients, total calories. Those things are, are at the bottom of the food pyramid. I will hit you up if there's any other follow-ups, but this was really great. I can't thank you enough for your time. No, I appreciate you, bud. I really do. So it's been a pleasure. All right. All right. Take All it right. easy. Bye. Bye.